Joining me from Phoenix, Arizona is Michael Dorsey, a leading voice on climate, environmental issues, and sustainability. Michael, welcome to the program. Clearly, Caribbean countries have a lot at stake here, and they have good reason to be worried about climate change. Talk to us, if you will, um, about the threat, which could be disastrous for so many of these coastal communities. Absolutely. The climate crisis is already playing out, not just in the Caribbean, but around the world, and particularly devastating for those on the margins, just like those in the Caribbean are. Uh, those in the Caribbean, like other marginalized communities in North America and South America, around the globe, they contribute the least to the unfolding climate crisis that's upon us and we're facing all over the earth. Uh, but they experience it first and the worst. Uh, their communities have seen the ravages of uh, advanced cyclonic activity in the form of hurricanes across the region. We all know many of the names. They've seen a tremendous uh, downside, uh, you know, impacts on their economies and on livelihoods. Uh, so really getting that promised $100 billion per year that was set forth, you know, uh, over a decade ago in Copenhagen at the Copenhagen talks is absolutely critical, not just for the Caribbean, but for marginalized uh, communities and citizens all over the world. Well, they clearly need help, they need money, they need resources, um, and all these promises and commitments have not been met. So where do you go on from here? Well, we hope that the new UN climate chief, uh, Steele, uh, who's from Grenada, from the Caribbean region, is going to accelerate the commitments that uh, rich countries like here in the United States are making to those on the margins. Uh, we hope that that new leadership uh, from the region uh, and representing island uh, nations in particular uh, is going to up uh, the commitments that rich countries can make. So it's a step in the right direction. We're going to see how that plays out in the coming negotiations in Egypt and then the negotiations for next year that will be in Abu Dhabi. And well, of course, we've seen extreme climate conditions around the world, flooding, uh, record heat, wildfires. How much of this is blamed or should be blamed on climate change when you see these fires and the heat waves being more intense and lingering so much longer? Well, it's just not the blame to be put on something abstract as climate change. We've got a, a great amount of new research and actually some old research that puts the blame, the blame rather, squarely on the, the shoulders and backs of fossil fuel industry in particular for driving and accelerating the problem, all the while while denying that they're contributing to the problem. So we don't have to talk about the abstract climate change is the problem for these extreme weather events. We can put the blame squarely where it it needs to be and where the science says it is on those that are emitting fossil fuels, the fossil fuel industry, particularly oil and gas and the waning coal sector. You mentioned COP27 in Sharm el Sheikh, Egypt. I believe it, that is happening in November. Uh, what do you want to see from this gathering? Uh, again, uh, do these meetings really accomplish much when you cannot hold these countries accountable to their promises and commitments? Well, the meetings are absolutely important and critical because it is the one-stop shop, as it were, for the world's nations to come together to also bring in, as they oftentimes do, members of the private sector, members of the scientific community to advise on the process, to hopefully inject private capital in into the process. So it's uh, the coming meeting in Egypt is absolutely critical. And the UN process, the multilateral process, is critical for shaping pledges. But we certainly got to not just see new pledges, not just see sort of recommitments on top of commitments, but we got to see more monies flow urgently to those that are on the margins, like in the Caribbean, flow quickly and flow at the scale that they need for those countries to get out ahead of the problem.